fall is in the air and nothing says fall better than family dinners and pumpkin pie. And today I'm going to give you my spin on pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie with a cheesecake layer and chocolate in the middle. Ooh, it is so good. So today we're going to be making um, a family favorite. Um, it's my pumpkin chocolate cheesecake pie. Uh, so there's going to be a layer of pumpkin and then a layer, a thin layer of chocolate. And then on top of that, uh, cream cheese It is to die for. Um, I can't remember exactly where I got this recipe. All I know is that I have been making it for years and now my daughter makes it for her holidays. Now, when it comes to pumpkin pie, you have a choice of either the canned um, puri um, pumpkin or you can make your own. Um, making your own is very good. Um, just make sure that you buy a sugar pumpkin. Sugar pumpkins are those smaller pumpkins that are about this size. Um, they are the sweet pumpkins that this type of puree is made out of. Other pumpkins aren't as sweet. Um, also to remember that the sweeter it is, the less sugar you um, have to put into it. Now, as a lot of you know, um, I am gluten-free and my family is not. Um, so I am using a gluten-free um, pre-made shell. I absolutely prefer making my own. Um, but I'm usually under a time constraint, so you can make your own crust, a regular pie crust, or buy a regular pie crust. Just make sure that it's deep dish. Um, or you can get a uh, gluten-free one like I have. So one of the first things we need to do is cook the pie shell. And we're going to be putting this in a preheated 450 degree oven um, for approximately... Um, 10 minutes. Um, you just want to brown it. You don't want it overdone. And I always prick mine a little bit um, just so it doesn't bubble up. So you can just do a few here. And then we're going to go ahead and put this again in a 400 um, degree Fahrenheit oven. So the first thing we're going to do is make the cream cheese filling while our pie shell is cooking. And remember, your pie shell's time on how long it has to cook has to do with whether you're making your own pie shell or frozen one or gluten-free. So just follow the instructions of how you're making your pie shell. But you're going to make a, a regular pastry shell. Um, you could try a graham cracker shell. I've never tried that, but I'd like to try to be a a little bit consistent with the holidays and use a regular pastry shell. So the first thing we're going to do is that we have the cream cheese at room temperature and our eggs at room temperature. You always cook at room temperature because it will make your cheesecake portion fluffier. No matter when you make cheesecake, you should always cook with uh, room temperature eggs. And then the cream cheese being room temperature just makes it softer and easier to mix. So 12 ounces of cream cheese is one of these larger bricks of cream cheese and, and a half. So this is eight ounces and then half of, um, of a whole brick and one egg. And then a fourth of a cup of sugar. And so in a medium bowl here, I'm going to go ahead and whip this on a low speed. Um, and then when it's all creamy, um, I'm going to put it into the bottom of the cooled um, pastry shell. So our cream cheese and eggs and sugar are all whipped up. And you can see it's very creamy. Um, it has just this very velvety um, consistency. So we're going to go ahead and put this in our cooled pie shell. So in the pumpkin pie portion of my pie, I'll be using brown sugar. And I'm in Colorado and it's extremely dry here. What a lot of people don't realize is that we actually are like a desert here. And my uh, brown sugar gets really dry here and no matter what I do it always dries out. So I'm going to measure out what I need which is two-thirds of a cup and then I'm going to put it in um, a bowl and put it in the microwave for just 
a like 10 seconds just to soften it up a little bit so it will mix. So if you ever have that problem, you can do the same um, because brown sugar does tend to dry out, um, especially in America Southwest. So now we're going to be making our pumpkin pie layer. Um, I'm probably going to have a ton um, more than I need. So again, I'm going to make another pie um, out of the leftovers that I end up with. But in my bowl here, I have one can of pumpkin pie. That's a um, 15 ounce can. I am using organic pumpkin um, puree. And then I have brown sugar, two thirds of a cup. And now I'm going to be putting in two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I always thought that this um, portion would be really good with some freshly grated um, ginger in there also. So if you love ginger, you know, you can put some grated ginger in there. So next we're going to add four room temperature eggs. I use organic and then three fourths of a cup of half and half or light cream. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and whip this up. So I've whipped up the ingredients and as you can see I have quite a bit in here. So again I'm going to make two pies, maybe just a whole pumpkin pie just out of this. Um, but I've been thinking about the fresh gar uh, ginger thing and I think I am going to go ahead and put some fresh ginger in and I'm just going to, you know, you don't have to peel the, uh, uh, fresh ginger. People for some reason think you have to, but this is where all the heat is. And a nutrient, and there's so many nutrients here. So you don't have to chop it up. Just, you know, I use the same thing I use for my um, Parmesan cheese. So I'm just gonna put about a fourth, about an eighth to a fourth. Again, this is gluten-free, so I'm gonna be the only one eating it, the other pie. Regular pie will be for my family. And as you've noticed, we haven't put any flour in this at all. Uh, the eggs is um, what holds it together. Um, so it's considered regular or gluten-free, depending on what shell you use. Um, but having that ginger in there, oh, that's gonna give it that, what is that flavor in your pie uh, question. So my pie crust is done, and this is the first time I've ever used a pre-made gluten-free pie crust. And again, you can make your own, make a, a traditional pie crust, whatever you want to do. But again, I'm gluten-free, and so I make, I have a gluten-free pie crust. But I am so busy that um, during the holidays, that sometimes it's just really hard for me to make a pie crust unless I have a lot of help. Um, will I make my own, um, but there's nothing like homemade. Totally the best. Um, so this pie crust, I cooked a little bit too much because I'm not used to cooking these. And I probably should have cooked this more like eight minutes because I'm a little concerned that it got a little too brown, if you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I still am gonna fill it up um, and I am going to put foil around the edges. I even have these great things that I put on the edges when this happens, um, which I'll put a link down in the description to those, um, that will keep it from browning more because remember, we still have to cook the pie. So we're gonna go ahead and cool this. And once it's cooled, we're gonna go ahead and put in our cream cheese filling. So why the pie crust is um, cooling, we want this completely cooled. We have turned down our oven to 350, um, and that's what we're gonna cook our pie at. So one of the reasons that it's so important that you have a deep dish uh, pie shell is because you're putting three layers in here. And as you can see, my pie shell is not that deep, it being a gluten-free one. But make sure that if you're buying these pre-done um, ones, that they are the deep dish ones. Um, it's best if you do make your own because then you can really truly make it deep dish. I find that even though it's marked deep dish and they're pre-made, they're not that deep. Um, so I didn't use all my cream cheese. Um, I probably could have gotten two pies out of this. Um, matter of fact, I'm even thinking about taking some of this out and um, 
making two pies instead of just one. I probably have enough ingredients to do that. So once you line the bottom of your um, pie, your cool pie crust with the cream cheese mixture, you're going to put um, the chocolate chips on. And this is another reason why you want this cool um, because not only are you dealing with cream cheese, which is like butter, but you're also dealing with chocolate and you want to be able to spread it around without it melting. Um, so I have um, three-fourths of a cup of these mini chocolate chips. Um, as you can see, they're just these little ones. And you're going to put a layer all the way around. Okay. And again, my pie shell is not that deep, um, so I'm probably not going to use a whole three-fourths of a cup. Okay. Chocolate chips everywhere. So you spread it around with your clean hands and you make a nice layer. Um, it doesn't have to be completely solid, um, just so it makes this nice layer of chocolate because remember it will melt and it will spread out um, and then you have this nice chocolate layer on top of your cream cheese. So now we're going to go ahead and make the pumpkin layer. Um, as you can see, I don't have a ton of room in this pie shell, so I'm not going to have a real thick pumpkin layer. Um, but I actually like cream cheese better than pumpkin, so um, I put more cream cheese in mine. So you can dictate the layer thickness by what portion you like best. So again, I put more uh, cream cheese filling in my gluten-free one, and the other one will be a little more even, uh, just because I like the cheesecake better. Um, but I find that if I use a ladle, I'm able to get uh, just the right amount on top of the layer. Oh, I can't wait to taste that fresh ginger in this pie. Um, I just think it's going to be so good. I like using ladles too because it, it helps with the spreading of um, the pumpkin. I'm going to put a little bit in the middle here. And so you just want to make sure that your chocolate is covered and you don't want to put too much in here. And if you find you do put too much in, um, put some foil underneath the um, bottom so you don't um, dirty your oven or you can um, put it on a cooking a cookie sheet. I personally don't like to put things on cookie sheets when it comes to pie because I think it cooks the bottom too much. Anyways, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and cook this for about an hour in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. So we're all done. Um, you can see these just kind of come off. You kind of sometimes have to cut them off a little bit so they don't tear. You want to put this in the refrigerator for two to three hours or the day before you're going to be serving. Um, so bon appetit. Look how marvelous this is. Oh. Cheesecake, chocolate, pumpkin, all my favorites. Yum. Oh. Can totally impress your family with this during the holidays.